Hello fans, viewers, welcome back to my beer reviews with me, Ruku. Today's beer review, I've already gone and just cracked it open, I haven't poured it yet, but I've cracked it open. It's a triple, I think that's Carmelet or Camulet, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Uh, this is from Belgium, a big 750ml, and comes in at 8.4. Um, apparently brewed from a 17th century recipe that's been unchanged since that time. As a completely natural beer, so no additives or anything else in it, it's all completely natural. Uh, according to this around here, so it's used by three different grains. So I don't know what they are, but I do know um, that the thing is on the back there. So yeah, I'm not going to look at that. I just want to crack straight on with this and just see my own. So let that settle down a bit. Bit of a sort of hazy to golden light colour. Head is decent as you can see, but I've poured that deliberately that way because this glass has no etching, so I do want a bit of a head on it. But uh, yeah, the pour is very sort of straw yellow colour, golden, sort of a bit, bit of a weak sort of yellow. But there it is. One more time. So from Belgium, by the way, I forgot to mention that. From Belgium, and as it's becoming a bit of a rarity nowadays because of uh, you know the snowflake generation and political correctness, we don't have this anymore. It is in fact corked. Yeah, these beers are very hard to get now, especially with the corked. There are some that you can still buy. But uh, Left, for example, was corked and is no longer corked because InBev bought them out and decided that it'll be cheaper and easier to use uh, just standard caps. I prefer the cork myself because I think it keeps and retains the flavour more so. Um, so I prefer it. There you go, time to settle now. So there we go with that colour, it's very hazy. Head is like shaving foam but very white as well, brilliant white colour. Nice sort of carbonation to this, I can hear it crackling. Let's dab a little bit more in there. Right, let's crack on with a smell, shall we? Sort of like a, a lemon undertone, um, like a lemon peel, uh, corn, uh, cereal grains, that kind of thing. Slight sort of perfuminess. So it smells pretty decent, but will it be decent? Let's find out. Very um, flavorful, smooth, gentle on the palate, somewhat creamy in places. Again, I'm getting like a zestiness. I don't know if that's lemon, orange peel, something like that. Almost like a lemon sherbet, even. Good, reasonable carbonation on the mouth as well. The head works well with this as well. The head is, is foamy, and it really does help that that flavour come in. You got the that head work in, the flavour comes in at the same time. Aftertaste again is of that sort of sort of lemony sherbet, herby, florally sort of flavour. And it's a real gentle beer, and at eight point four, wow, you can tell this is this is a a very good brew indeed. And if this is true, if it is true to the exact word that they have made this from the 17th century, <coughs> pop up, sign of a good beer. <coughs> and they haven't changed the recipe, and this is all natural. Then this is a good beer. It's got decent flavour, easy to drink, nice and light bodied. That mouth feels really gentle and that head really takes over and expands in the mouth there. Lovely aftertaste. Um, first impressions, I think it's actually quite nice. A little bit of lacing and the head diminishes quite quickly in this glass as you can see. 
but ideally you would have a beer head on it if you're using the correct glass, which I'm not. I don't, I don't own the actual real glass to this, but um, I'm going to give you a quick little read on the back here, which uh, I did say that I would do. So apparently this is uh, a blonding style, which we know. Smooth and fruity. Um, is it fruity? Well, sort of. Sort of. Um, it's, it's a free grain beer, so they're also using free grains, which I said. The final fermentation in the bottle, still brewed to the 17th century recipe from the old Carmelite monastery of Dendermont, and with wheat, oat and barley, 100% natural beer. So oat and barley being two, two of the ingredients, but we don't know what else is in it. If it's got wheat in it, in theory you could remix it, and if it's finally secondary fermenting in the bottle, then uh, you could in theory age this for a lot longer, and it'll probably taste even better. But I haven't got time here today to age it. And to be quite honest, I only got the one bottle, and didn't, didn't buy two, which I'm kind of regretting because it's such a good beer. Um, but you could age it in theory should you want to. There you go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So there you go, fans. That is it from me. Um, a very well-rounded beer, a very decent beer, good flavours, strong flavours. Um, I would buy this again without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, if you've tried this, then let me know what you think of it. And would you buy it? Let me know. On to the score. I'm going to score this a 9 out of 10. Easy to get down, good flavours, long-lasting flavours. Um, gentle on the palate, lively carbonation. So, ticks all the boxes for me. So, yeah. There you go. It's been a long time since I've got a good score like that. Don't forget, fans, you can join me next time for some more beer reviews. If you like what you see, come in and comment. Like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos. Get them out there to anyone who loves beer, because at the end of the day, we all do love a drop of beer, don't we? Thanks for watching. Till next time.